Here I am going to show you how to configure that QNAP NAS 852DD6. Once after inserting the hard disk, if we are connected the QNAP into the network, we need to find the QNAP IP address from the DHCP. For this purpose, we need to use QFinder application. Here in the description, I have attached the QFinder application link. We are able to install the QFinder application, same as like Windows application installation. I have just installed the QNAP QFinder application. Once after installation, here I open the application for finding the QNAP IP address. Make sure you are having the DHCP before connecting the QNAP in the network. While open the QNAP finder, we need to give the appropriate firewall permissions. Now we are able to see the QNAP IP address. If you are selecting the QNAP IP address, we are able to log in the QNAP over the web browser. The QNAP still not yet initialized, so here I am manually entering the IP address in browser. Once we enter the IP address, it will redirect to 8080 port. We are able to see that one on the web browser link. It is a default port of QNAP NAS. Here I am closing the warranty service that will add later. Here we need to press the start smart installation. Now we need to check the latest firmware availability. If the latest firmware is available, we need to update the firmware or we need to manually update the firmware. Then enter the NAS name, username, password and we need to re-enter the confirm password. This is some master username and password for managing the QNAP. So we need to make sure this username and password is, is saved properly. We need to enter the username, then we need to enter the password and we need to repeat the password. Then press the next button. Don't forget, this is a master password for managing QNAP NAS. Then select the time zone and we can set the NTP server for updating the time automatically. Then enter the next button. Here you can use automatic IP. If you are using automatic IP, that means DHCP, we can press the next button. Here I am changing the IP address. Then we can press the next button. Then I am pressing apply button. Once after we need to press the initialize. This process will take time. Here I am doing the fast forwarding for avoiding the video lagging. If you are watching my channel first time, please press the subscriber button for watching more videos. Once after finishing the initialization, the device will reboot. Here we will get the option to log in with the master username and password. I am entering the master username and password which I configured before. First login time we will get more guidance. Here I am skipping this all the guidance and directly log into the options. If you are selecting the control panel, here we will get the option to set up the storage area. In this device I have already added two M2 SSD and two normal hard drive for storage. M2 SSD is using for caching and other two I am using for storing the data. In this both drive I am using the RAID volumes. Here I am set up storage pool. For this purpose I need to select storage or snapshot. Then select new storage pool. Here we need to select the drive and we can select the RAID options. Here I am using the mirrored volume, so I am using the RAID one. And if we are having any multi hard disk for Hotspear, we can select that one. Rest all I am keeping the same and pressing the next button. Here we need to select the alert threshold and snapshot space. Here I am using the default one which is already having. Then I am pressing the next button. Then press the create button. Press OK. It will take time. Once after we will get the pop-up option for creating new volume. I am pressing the new volume creation. 
or we can manually create later then i am selecting the volume storage full then pressing next button selecting the capacity then pressing the next button here i am using the simple method for nas storage configuration then press the next button press okay now storage fully started to initialize now i need to set up my ssd as caching so i am just selecting cache acceleration then press next button here we need to select the m2 ssds for caching here i am using raid for redundancy this is a method we are using for fast data retrieval and writing i am selecting the ssd once after selecting the ssd we are able to see cache type by default we will get read only if you want to change read write we are able to change to read write if we are selecting read only while reading time the data passes through the caching ssd if we are selecting read write both time reading and writing time data will pass through the caching ssd else we can select writing only mode the major issue is if read write mode any case of device restarting or powering off the data may lose which is having the ssd cache so we are always preferring read only data depend upon the cache type data reading and writing method will be vary here i am using the read only cache type method and then selecting read one read one means mirrored volume then pressing next button if you are using read write method we we are able to change the settings once after finishing the data then i am selecting all io here we are able to select cache mode i am always recommending use all io the other case it will be only for virtual machine and database applications i am selecting that one and press next button then select the data volume then press next button every time we will get the option for data writing protection press i understand then press the okay button now our caching ssd is already configured for managing the snapshot we need to go for storage and snapshots then go to settings once after selecting the volume we are able to select the snapshot manager here we are able to set change the settings of snapshot we we are able to schedule the snapshot for daily hourly repeat weekly monthly options are available here i am selecting weekly options and then press okay button then press okay based on the snapshot percentage disk will create a data backup snapshot now i am going to configure user for login nas for accessing the data for this purpose i am selecting the control panel then selecting the user then press the create enter the user name and password if you want to select the optional features you are able to select the optional features for creating the user we need to enter the username and password then press the create button as per the policy username and password should be different here we have created the user now we need to allocate a particular storage for accessing the user for this purpose we need to log in to the control panel we need to go again the control panel then press the shared folder here we can create shared folder enter the name of shared folder then press the next button once we are pressing the next button we are able to see the available users we are able to select the user permission in that location in here we are able to select the while selecting the user we are able to see read only 
read write and dna if you are selecting dna the user cannot able to access the particular folder here i am selecting read write then press next button again we need to press the finish button then press the finish button for finishing the setup now this folder is able to access for the user we created for accessing the data in windows system we need to use run command then double backslash enter the ipo for us once we enter the details it will ask the username and password enter the username and password which we created then press the okay button now the created shared folder is able to access for log out the qna right side corner near to username we are able to see the log off options thank you for watching this video if you like the video please press the like button share and subscribe